Hello guys, Alan here. Welcome to my workshop. In my previous video I showed making this uh, NT40 ER40 collet chuck. I wanted to make it as short as it could be, but I achieved that. But all, unfortunately it also had excessive run out, which uh, made it, uh, as far as I'm concerned, useless. Um, so uh, I was faced with a couple of options. I could scrap it and start again, or see if it was possible to modify this one and fix the problem. And since I needed to know where the problem actually crept in in the first place, I decided to go down that route first. So I'm pleased to say that um, I was successful in uh, resolving the, the run-out problem. And uh, in this video you'll see how I went about it. So I hope you find it interesting. Okay, so I started by uh, having a bit of a look at uh, my existing purchase chucks to see what I should expect. And uh, one of my purchase ones was much better than the other, but they were both a lot better than the one I'd made. So I mounted my chuck upside down underneath the better of the two and, and found out that my tapers weren't parallel. And the, the, that's the reason why the problem was so much worse the further away I got from the, uh, the, the common face of the two tapers. Right, so uh, from my dial gauge testing, I believe that the axis of that taper, the uh, 40 taper, is slightly off, the, is at a slight angle to the axis of the NT40 taper. So what I'm going to do, I've uh, just put a bit of bar stock in the three jaw and turned a 50 millimeter, sorry, a 25 millimeter stub arbor. I put that on there and tighten it up and uh, just check the run out. And then uh, the idea would be to take a cut on here to try and true it up. But let's get it tightened up and just look at the uh, run out figures. Right, so I've got the uh, 40 in mounted on my uh, arbor and uh, rotate around. We can see I've got nearly five thou of ran out up the tail in there. So that's what we're trying to fix. Just get all this lot back out of the way so you can see. I want to support this end um, with the tailstock and to do that I'll wind a bolt into the threaded end. Looks like I need to put a washer under the head of the bolt there because the thread doesn't run all the way up to the underside. Anyway, so the idea is to uh, have that bolt in there and put a, a centre in there and then I'll have proper support. So I'll bring you back when I've got all that set up. Just, just under six, let's call it six thou of run out. Um, on the diameter. Um, now this is uh, taper is 7 in 24 so if I take 6 thou off there I'm going to move the the end of the taper along uh, about 20 thou or half a millimeter and I've got three millimeters to play with there so I, I'm probably just all right. Um, of course where to start is a bit of an issue I wasn't game to take the 12 thou off the diameter in one go, um, just in case I overdid it. So I actually took about three, I think three separate goes. My first one was about six thou, and then nine I think, and finally 12. And uh, 12, as it turned out, was exactly what was required. So taking the lighter cuts meant I didn't get a very good surface finish, but uh, I really wasn't that worried about that in this situation. Right, so after taking 12 off, off the diameter, six off the radius, it's looking like we're pretty good. And I guess that's consistent with the six I was reading on the dial gauge, because that was reading on the radius, wasn't it? Happy with that anyway. So I decided to sneak up on the, uh, the amount that I needed to machine off the taper and I did a, a four thousandths and then an eight thousandths um, pass, on the diameter that is, and uh, the eight thousandth seemed to be just the ticket, so that's what I went for. It's not quite as uh, glossy as the previous finish, but it's pretty good. 
So then I uh, used the dial gauge to um, check on the, the run out at uh, several positions uh, along the uh, the adapter. So I started with the tail just to make sure nothing uh, nasty had happened there. So that all looked pretty good. Then I had the uh, look at the uh, the thin end of the taper and um, really what I was checking for here is to make sure they had actually taken enough material off and not left an, ex an eccentricity or any flat spots or anything. So I also had a look at the uh, the fat end of the taper. Um, it was, again, it, was, it all looked pretty good. And the, just for completeness, I had a quick look in the middle there. But uh, whilst the surface finish wasn't fantastic, it was it's all right, and it's certainly good enough for the job. And uh, anyway, um, I was quite pleased with it all. So um, yeah. I'm inclined to think uh, it's time to call that done and uh, take it over to the milling machine and see what happens. Right, well I've got my adapter back in the milling machine and uh, I'm using the, uh, the, the, the same end mill with a one inch shank that I used with the original testing. Unfortunately I can't use the same uh, collet because uh, use the collet that I was using in the lathe because that was for a 25 diameter bar and this uh, end mill's got a one inch shank but uh, such is life anyway um, as you can see we're getting an excellent result here okay well I'm pretty happy with that result as you can imagine um, a run out of 0.003 millimeters or a couple of tenths of a thou uh, that's pretty good um, so I want to uh, pay um, tribute or say thanks to the, the uh, YouTube viewers and the subscribers who offered their um, advice and uh, experience on how I could address the problem that I had. Um, it was very much appreciated and thank, thank you all for taking the time to do that. Uh, in particular I want to say thanks to Bad Juju. Uh, his suggestion was the one that I ultimately used and fixed the problem. He pointed out to me that the main reason I was having a problem was that I had done this taper and then independently done that taper. So it's not surprising that they didn't quite line up. His suggestion was that I do the first taper, the ER40, and then um, put that in the, the lathe and use that as the reference point for doing the second taper, which is what you saw me do with the corrective action. And with that approach, I got a very good result. So that was very good advice and um, much appreciated. Well, I only wanted this video to be short. It was just a follow-up and uh, showing um, some hints and tips that might be useful for anybody following along. Um, so if you stuck with it, thanks very much for watching it. Hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers.